morning. We are very happy to meet Professor Chandra Mohini Trivedi, who is the uh, head of the Geology Department in PHU, Banaras Hindi University, one of the oldest universities of India. And uh, we have few uh, gifts for you. This is a brochure. It's called Dive Deep into Reality. And this is one book written by actually interview, a series of interviews and dialogues from Srila Bhakti Rasa Dev Goswami Maharaj, who was the founder of Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Mutt, under whose banner we are carrying out this kind of work. And this is a small pamphlet that 21st century should be about the harmony of science and religion. Although in the last century, uh, science and religion were somewhat uh, different branches and were not so easily coming together, but in the advancement of science and technology that has taken place over the last 150 years, uh, it seems that harmony of science and religion will be a major theme in this century. So, we would like to ask you that in India, especially this Banaras, which is well known for a uh, Vedantic tradition and since we are now in a very good university, a technological university, what do you think is the uh, main uh, symptom of life? How we should you know, go ahead in describing living systems? From scientific terminology, means life means if anything which is undergoing activities mm -hmm. to survive, mm -hmm. that is the life and for that we need different kinds of cellular activities which occur not only in the animal cells but also in the plant cells. But some molecule like bacteria, virus are not uh, categorized neither in animal nor in uh, plant sciences mm -hmm. but they are also a kind of life cells. So they are also similar kind of activity undergoes. So in scientific term life means if the cellular activities are going on. You might be knowing that uh uh, since the last 2000 years, science and religion were always going hand in hand. But uh, after the arrival of a few, you know, persons, especially Charles Darwin, mm -hmm. science has taken a very, especially biology has taken a very atheistic turn. Mm -hmm. uh, however, in spite of a lot of hard work, the scientists have not been able to produce a single sentient organism from starting from chemicals. So, don't you think this is a major uh, proof that it, uh, life is not a product, product of chemical reactions? Although there are many theories, but still we cannot say that how, exactly we cannot pinpoint how it has originated life. So, if you think from religious point of view, I would say religion is a belief and science is the fact. So, we need some proof how uh, right. religion, uh, how the science has evolved, but definitely there is some natural force to whom you can name anything which has allowed the life to start with. So, I mean, it's a good thing because after science also there is something which science is not able to find it out. So, it's my personal belief, I'm not saying the scientific thing, it's my personal belief that there is some natural force which, in which uh, the belief is called the religion name of that science we can say is the religion. So if there is some way you can correlate or prove that really life and the religion, science and the religion has correlation, that will be very good if experimentally or by some proof we can prove it. But as far as I know, religion is the name of belief. Well, nothing uh, to prove. Well, well, you know, the actual Vedantic view is slightly different. It is not a question of just a belief, because it is a scientific fact, scientific truth, that there is life. And you know, if you see the definition Yeah, that is true. It is it's no question of belief. It is true. It is truth yes. that life is there. We are yes. alive. Now, see, if we see the uh, recent work of Shapiro, uh, he wrote a book, 21st Century uh, Evolution, a view from 21st Century. Evolution, a view from 21st Century. There he states that the entire focus of, of uh, a large section of biologists who uncover the secret of, of life through the DNA molecule or the genes is just like searching for the keys under the lamp post, which means that there was a man who lost his key in the forest mm -hmm. and the whole forest was dark, he could not actually search it. But suddenly he saw some lamp yeah. in the corner and thought my key must be there. Yeah. 
but he's searching very hard, still he cannot, he cannot find. No question so, of finding there. So we have given all our focus to the DNA molecule, to the uh, transcription factors, but still we have not been able to synthesize or, or uh, a single cell. And moreover, the... And synthesize experimentally? Yeah, yeah, experimentally, we have not yeah. been able to synthesize. All the experiments on the living organisms are all on already existing yes. Yes. organisms. Yes. Whatever genetic engineering practices we have done. And moreover, we have never generated a single uh, knowing being or consciousness or uh, consciousness exhibiting being from such robotic experiments or chemical yeah, I, I, I fully agree with this experiments. thing. It's not possible but as I, of today. But as such, you know, we met one uh, scientist, Roger Penrose, in Calcutta, Nesson Bose, he had come. And he told that, um, that there is consciousness, but he cannot, you know, say whether, uh, for sure, what it is. Like you consciousness are, where? Consciousness is there. Like in, in the cell or in the organism. In, in, I mean, you observe consciousness, yes. but really there is no way to say what it is. In, in the, you know, scientific term. Usual, you know, the, the usual natural methodological systems, the way they define, you know, this consciousness. But uh, this, this this brand of new, you know, scientists, new biologists who are emerging, like Shapiro, they explain consciousness in terms of the um, the, the actual activity that we observe in the physiological phenomena. For example, when you see there is the uh, DNA molecule during its you know, repair and manufacturing. There are various processes like there is error recognition yeah. when the DNA molecule is being synthesized. There is a check yeah. through through the uh, through its enzymes. Yeah, for whether, a very mechanism and all. Whether the polymerization is going correctly or not. If the polymerization has not uh, not gone correctly, then it identifies where the exactly error is there. Right. Then it, it cleaves it, it cuts it at that point, and then reattaches the correct yeah. and the repair and segment yeah. there. Sure. So uh, such precise activities cannot be merely a random phenomenon. It must be well synchronized and uh, like uh, when we talk about recognition and error correction and such uh, precise activities, it seems that biological organisms are geared for maintaining the species rather than sudden change of species which is uh, being proposed by evolutionary theories. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on this point and will support by my saying, like we study in each cell, the question is of biological rhythm or biological clock. Now each cell knows when to perform and what to perform. So there is an endogenous clock. Earlier we were thinking that there is only one clock, biological clock in the body, mainly possibly in the brain, in the pineal gland or at the center, uh, hypothalamic center. But now we know each and every cell is having its own clock and these each clock are either controlled by the master clock or they have their independent uh, rhythm. Mm -hmm. So it means each cell is sufficient in itself mm -hmm. and even if you separate the cell from the organism or separate the cell or organism from the environment, it's still its cycle will continue irrespective of any clue from the environment. So this shows further that each cell is having some extra potency or extra controlling rhythm which is its endogenous property. Internal property. Internal property. Yes. Internal. So that yes. makes yes. Just like you know when we, uh, consciousness when we compare the machines, mm -hmm. machines require a control from outside. outside. Whereas a cell has all the controls but it, it, is not, it does not look like an external control system. It is well geared from within. So in scientific term we call it the endogenous mm -hmm. control or endogenous rhythmicity. Right. So if any bird is in the nature, mm -hmm. it will breed at a particular time of the year. Say mm -hmm. only in the spring or summer, it will uh, start forming the nest or singing and pairing and eggling. Mm -hmm. So that will start only in the summer because it is getting clue from the increasing days of spring. Mm -hmm. So as the days start getting longer, their gonadal development starts and they breed at a particular time of the year mm -hmm. which will be suitable for the survival of both mm -hmm. parents as well as the young ones. So this is how they correlate with the environmental factor. But if you keep these birds in the um, laboratory conditions or where it is not getting any clue from the nature mm -hmm. or say you keep it in continuous condition, 24 hours light for whole one year. So birds will not know when 
the spring is coming or when winter phase will start decreasing but still those bird will start those activity at a particular time of the year which uh, the other uh, birds in the population are doing in the nature so, that means so this good. shows that they are having endogenous consciousness endogenous rhythmicity right, right. which in nature correlates with the environmental factor but because of their endogenous property right. they do the same thing so there is something already yeah. within the organism, organism which is in cooperation with the outside environment outside. Uh, like in very well examples mm. like uh, crabs in the seashore mm -hmm. the crab come out uh, come out for feeding and uh, feeding and other activities mm -hmm. in correlation with the time of the high tide and the low tide right. so their activity starts they change their color but if so it is we will say because they are seeing the high tides low tides sunshine uh, sun set sunrise but if you keep them in the laboratory no connection with the um, seashore or the sea environment still at the same time they will start feeding they will start there so there is some consciousness so can we ask them one question is it possible to give a machine like logic to such phenomena machine like logic is means, I, yeah, I know machine can cannot do that that's what machine like logic means we start with some you know basic raw materials of nature like the law in nature mm -hmm. and then we combine them with some logic mm -hmm. and then uh, it's called analytical logic mm -hmm. then the machine starts functioning with their outside control but since uh, in the case of organism we never see such a, such a phenomenon because the only law for the organ the arrival of organisms is that given by like uh, rudolf virchow that on this cellular a cellular every cell comes from a pre existing cell every cell comes yeah from, from the because pre -existing, pre existing cell, cell. so in, 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 in other words it means there is there already exists a kind of an archetype a kind of a form to which the biological expression of this world conforms yeah because all all life starts from the single cell that is the zygote mm -hmm. that zygote divides forms many cells and then the differentiation takes place the organ forms mm -hmm. and finally the organism is formed so beginning is from the single cell zygote yes. by the uh, mixing of the sperm cell over yes. but maybe your question from where that thing has come is it yeah, your question I mean, from where the first cell came i mean see there are two arguments here one is the a general mechanical argument other is the biological argument and generally uh, last uh, so many years after, especially after darwin there was an attempt to show biology is nothing but combination of physics and chemistry that could be shown if it was possible to construct a cell by such processes mechanical or physical chemical processes if we can explain them by simply chemical activities or chemical potentials no, i agree with you <laughs> it is we all know about the science that what is the component of a cell or what it makes it like but no, yeah but once we know that we should be able to Explain form it, it. Yes, form it yes. but that is not possible yes. so yes that, that's the point the vedanta is clear yeah I, I now i got your point on what you want to yes. concentrate so basically because when we study anything we have to study at least in uh, that subject in at least two three you know different segments first is what is the starting material and second point is what combines them and third is what it does so we see that uh, in the case of a, uh, mechanical systems and biological systems there is a vast difference in this uh, logic itself because a, a bicycle for example can be constructed from iron from but of course there is intelligence in bicycle also but intelligence is applied from outside yeah you program it like that huh? yes but in a cell Who is in, in how to bring the intelligent fun, uh, function the cell also? There are you know, molecular motors, there are exchanges, there are communications, intracellular, intracellular, so many, and it is no, no, not a chaotic activity as it was so supposed. Well, well organized. Well synchronized, well organized. So there, so there must be an intelligence there. But how that intelligence can be explained? Because there is nothing external to it, but rather it is very intrinsic, it is very intensive. I mean, and it cannot be just like you know, when somebody dies. Uh, we say that the consciousness has gone. Okay. So what is that? You know that life. The difference. Uh, I that is the main question. Uh, yeah. That question <laughs> answer we would like to have from you because we don't know. We know what is going on in, inside the cell. We also know there is some endogenous rhythmicity, but we don't know how that endogenous rhythmicity is continued or maintained. When one dies, then everything is same in the body. 
one yes. uh, one second before, mm -hmm. all of a sudden something has gone out of the body. He said, "Ya atma nikal gayi, ya atma ne shari chhod diya." So, that yes. atma is probably the consciousness. Or Symptom the soul. of the yes, soul. Yes, whatever. So that's, uh, that's right. what you are. Uh, well, you know, you might be knowing there are many great in the uh, work, and I was recently working on one such person that is Trish. Uh, he was German, and he worked on um, embryology. That you know, sea urchin, echinus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a good model for studying development. And uh, he, he and, and you know, you might be very surprised. I mean, we are all surprised actually when we see that evolutionary biology has been going on for quite some time. Yeah. But still, up to 1950s, uh, the embryologists would not listen to it because for them, the entire um, secret or entire you know, foundation of the embryology was in the cytoplasm, where the evolutionary biology focused only on the nucleus. On the chromosome, so there was a kind of disparity. But uh, after this arrival of you know in fifties and DNA structure, they tried to correlate these two. Now, now we also know in the molecular embryology or that's called the developmental studies, developmental biology. biology yes. So there are there are many factors in the cytoplasm mm -hmm. which regulate or which decides or the determining factor mm -hmm. which will decide how and when say for the normal development how the limbs develop in vertebrates. Right. So there are limb bursts. After certain stimulation from somewhere, only then the limb bud development will start. Then in the limb bud is just the round thing, and then how the fingers are formed. So some cells they undergo apoptosis, means they yes, die. So then yes. only these fingers will be formed. Otherwise, it will be the same one thing. You cannot uh, say how and when. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are some determining factors which uh, decide what is to be done and how. Uh, so even in so the developmental biology, there are certain precise sequential, temporal and spatial rules. Like the differentiation occurs precisely according to the you know, spatial uh, structure, what they call the relation of symmetry and also uh, according to the sequence. Like suppose certain event, if it was supposed to happen at a particular time, if it does not happen, then after some time it does not happen. Yeah, because it is, the time is fixed, if that time is passed, yes. you will not get so it. Then so for the development, like for nine months during gestation. Mm -hmm. If you arrest it for some time, mm -hmm. then you will not get the proper uh, mm -hmm. development. So right. time is also fixed. The controlling factors Are should fixed. also act at this yes. particular time and on the particular tissue. So receptivity is also essential as well as the stimulus is also essential. And both should coincide, coincide in a required manner. Then only the desired effect will take place. So I, yes, I agree that there, is some force or in your term? Dryish actually uh, came to that conclusion because he, he started his life as a very you know, strong like an atheist. He wanted to you know, show the work of Weizmann or Rocks proven in the actual experiments. But actually when he did the experiments, he found a difference because even the half-cut embryo developed into full uh, embryo. Yeah, that is scientifically also proven because you need a particular material for development like you get the twin, mm -hmm. how you get the twins because same thing is divided at a particular time into two and each cell is having the potency to develop in everything that is called right. the determinate huh. so that's why you get uh, the right. two I mean twin or may sometimes three or four of the same kind so but but at a later stage Somehow, somewhere the pluripotence is lost. Yes. We, come to, uh, we, we cannot get back those. Yeah, it is only at a particular time, like yes. brain development. The brain develops at a particular time of the gestation period. If that during that period something goes wrong, then underdeveloped brain or mentally retarded children are there. So it is because at a particular time they should get the stimulus or the desired things. Actually, Dries's main point at that point was. At the, at the blastula stage, the blastomere stage, you can cut a particular part of the you know uh, organism, and then from that uh, that part again the whole organism can come. Yes. Whole yes. Yeah, can it come. is. Uh, so he is he, he argued it is a very strange sort of sort of a machine. If it was a machine, if it is to be compared to a machine, it is a very strange sort because even in the part of that machine the whole is already contained. So therefore, uh, he said that it cannot be you know um, reduced. To a, a mere mechanical explanation, and from there he came to the concept of, you know, he, he talked he called ability, and another time he called soul. But we would like to draw the attention of uh, here to Aristotle, because Aristotle, according to Hegel, 
was the in the last two years was the only account which was systematically presented is worth reading his account of you know, development. So he defined the soul as whatever as whatever it is that makes uh, the living organisms alive. He started from that you know first principle definition. No, we are, we believe in even religion like human is having soul. But what about even the bacteria is having soul? Yes, that's all. Yes, it was, not me. Without means the, your your uh, yes. thinking and yes. your yes yes actually different uh, living organisms whatever they may be there are actually eighty four like species according to uh, Padma Puram and each of these bodies are actually biological expression of the existing consciousness and that is very close to the Aristotle's idea also because for Aristotle the soul was the thing like extensive. Like you know, having special dimensions or like that. For him, it was very intensive, positive existence, and he takes great pain to explain that. So somehow, uh, because science must be um, evident from the facts, the evolution experiments, then our hypothesis must match, match our the results, and they must you know reproduce the, uh, the the hypothesis in our explanation. So do you have such a well, uh, the point is that um, modern biology is proving it in, in many ways, if we see very closely. First point is that the DNA centrism is gone. Like central dogma, which was supposed to explain the secret of life, is no longer uh, yeah. true. Then there is epigenesis has come into picture. That there is the role of the extraordinary standards. Extra standards. And not only that, there is the role of other organisms. Like we cannot consider life. We, we cannot consider an individual life in isolation. Yeah, we isolation. teach that no cell or organism can survive in isolation. They communicate yes. with each other, members of their own family, yes. uh, own species or of other species, yes. and also by the environment. So communication yes. is there. When we talk about life, cooperation, coexistence, and this, you know, helping each other, it becomes a very like foundation of you know, reality. Yeah, and in the, Within the organism, all the cells do the same thing. So therefore, when we talk about life, we have to consider the totality of consciousness uh, rather than just the individual cell of you know, conscious existence. Because that doesn't happen in nature. Everything is like, you know, through a flux of consciousness. So means you are talking consciousness of the organism. Not only organism, like if we see this human body, there are so many factors around it. It is said that uh, whatever mass we may have, 90% extra mass, is we have 10 percent, 90 percent is around this bacteria, and they are essential for our inner existence. Yeah. So therefore, we cannot understand this life only in terms of you know, a single cell or a single organism because the actual conception is much more wider. Uh, there is you know one more point there, which I wanted to draw your attention to, um, and that is that um, the the main thing is that. Uh, when we talk about evolution theory, when we talk about different species, then generally we demarcate one species from another species on various factors. But uh, one thing is that there is novelty, that between two, two different species uh, there are different yeah. kind of morphological structures. So it seems that in the modern evolutionary problem, uh, instead of genetic similarities or dissimilarities, the major question has become what causes those discontinuous novelties to arise. So how do we explain the arrival of um, these novelties? We, like there is theory of co-evolution, like no cell or no organism can exist in isolation. Similarly, when evolution took place, so there was co-evolution. So one species has evolved, so for the survival of that species, some other things are required. So that thing have, or that species has also evolved, that's called co-evolution. Co and one species got uh, was no more, or it was it was discontinued. So that was due to it could could not survive in the nature, or it like the survival of the fittest, or the conditions was not such that it was favorable for one species but not for the other. So that other species got extinct, and this continued. And for better survival, it has undergone some mutation or some changes to cope up with the changing environment or food. So well, this is how the changes take place during evolution. Well, uh, this our Vedantic idea is that everything is coming from within consciousness. 
means consciousness. Means the evolution is also coming from within, within consciousness. Yeah, because consciousness is the foundation. So if they can include this consciousness within this evolution theory, uh, it seems they will have a much better idea. But then we need proof, like you said initially. We already have some proof. proof. Experimental, like to prove any hypothesis. First we propose hypothesis, then mm -hmm. we need experiments to prove that hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So do we have or do you have that type of well, proof or some, 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 some I know. Certain experiments were you know, being suggested by our you know, group from group. Like for example, there was, uh, we could do some experiment. We have basically two main points. One is that life comes from life. That's true. Other is matter also comes from life. Modern science takes that matter is a given, is a foundation. Like there is a period of carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, all yeah, this. So in the body also like we are of organic compounds, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So, that so, is the basic. So they think that they are the foundation. And through some very complex combination of these, consciousness arises. This is the modern you know, idea. Yeah, from the simple amino acids, then the right. peptides are formed, then protein, then... But, but the Vedantic idea is completely different. Okay. It says that consciousness was already there and everything else arose from within consciousness. Means so consciousness was the beginning material beginning and substance. other things a beginning substance. Other things came in close contact and then the cell of the organism no. came in Well, that is a, another deep, deep subject again, how they are arising. But we don't say they come in contact. But they are coming from within consciousness. It's like so all these material came from within the within consciousness. consciousness. That, that no, but we need this material somewhere from outside. Yes, that in is just in vacuum, say consciousness is there somewhere in vacuum. Mm -hmm. In vacuum, you cannot form this cell. You need some organic material there, isn't it? Well, uh, that is a deep subject. Uh, right now, I think uh, I would not like to go too much into that because it becomes too philosophical. No, no, it has a, a, but, a uh, but, I, but I have stated that as a you know. Uh, as a requirement for a you know, discussion on Vedanta and science, because we have two main axioms: one is life comes from life, and matter comes from life. So okay, matter comes from life. Life comes from life is uh, right. I mean, acceptable. Matter also, like you say, you say. Matter means what? Some, you matter are means, element or matter whatever. means you know whatever has, uh, uh, whatever can be measured, like length, okay. breadth, shape, size. Like you know now because uh, one of our you know Acharyas, Sri Maharaj was telling that you think that a very complex thing has arose from a very simple thing, but why don't you think a very simple okay. thing can arise from a very complex thing? So when you try to understand consciousness, it is a holistic phenomenon. But when you talk about matter, you think that it is an atomic phenomenon. But how can something very holistic arise from merely fragmentary existence? Rather, it is uh, more scientific to think that uh, simple thing have come up from the complex things. Which means consciousness is already pre-existing. So, which is the consciousness in your terms? Consciousness is the complex thing. Yeah, because consciousness has many you know dimensions: knowing, understanding, yeah. reason, yeah. thought. All these are yeah, which you cannot measure. Which you cannot which, see. Yes, and they are already complex because they cannot be explained through simple mechanical push pulls or forces. Right. I understand it was very good uh, opportunity which we missed <laughs> if uh, your lecture could have been arranged on that day. But I think if some some other time when we have slot available, uh, we can sometime be in contact or if you get chance to yes. again visit uh, this side of yeah, the country. Yeah, we will be very happy can, because we, we can arrange. Actually, this Varanasi is so nice place because, for, because our book is Chaitanya Chaitanya. And there, Lord Chaitanya has come I mean, to. This book is your. Yes. Okay. So, where is your office at all in Calcutta? Our, our main office is with uh, in Princeton, Sripad Bhakti Mata Puri Maharaj. He is our director. Puri means from Jagannath Puri? Uh, Puri Maharaj, or just the name? No, Puri is his name. Achha, name and, of and the person. It indicates Madhavendra Puri, okay. who was the, uh, the foundation, the root of this Krishna consciousness movement, which is now spreading all over the world. But its root, it represents the root foundation and Lord Ch Chaitanya himself recognized Madhavendra Puri as the very root of Krishna Prem. And Mahaprabhu has said that uh, in all over the world, as many cities and as many towns are there, the holy name will be preached. And that way the living beings will become will get the actual happiness for which they are searching. And especially it was uh, mentioned by A. Sivakti Vedanta and Prabhupada that unlike the scientists, philosophers, doctors, the well qualified people, citizens of the world, they come together and discuss what is God 
what are these energies, what are these diverse energies, until then there cannot be any paradise of humans. So I think sometime I would like to arrange your lecture in our department, in the geology department, Thank you, sir. and then going into what is the other aspect, then we can fix it with the other material sciences department in a bigger platform. It's like the Faculty of Science where all the people from physicist, chemist, yes, and will be botanist, they will be there. Uh, but at my level, I would like to arrange it sometime in my department. Thank you so much. Uh, so maybe just keep in touch whenever you get time to come. Yes, we also invite you to Navadvi. We have a nice center, international center yes. in Navadvi, in West Bengal. Just, just about 100 kilometers from Howrah Station towards north. Towards north. Towards north east or towards from Shantiniketan side? Uh, Shantiniketan is another side. Shantiniketan, through that side, you can come to Eka Chakra, Birmo, where the uh, appearance list of Lord Nityananda is. Your address is here, isn't it? So yes. Yes. Sometime I get a chance to come that side. Thank you so much.